What's up guys, Steve here again from RC Tanks and Trucks 24-7 and this is the first video in the actual building of the uh, G-Made Sawback. So there'll be a few videos uh, in this series but uh, this is the first one here and what you see here are all the parts needed up until, well really, step six which is all building the lower transmission, sorry the lower axles and attaching the leaf springs and stuff like that. So I set out all the parts here nice and neat. So this is everything we need. Obviously these are a lot of nice parts here. Got some nice metal parts including the, the diff covers. They're nice and metal which is a good uh, touch. Comes with full ball bearings. Nice shock grease and uh, gear grease containers. Nice little touch instead of the generic ones you get like in the uh, Tamiya kits like this. So yeah, pretty impressed. Uh, this is not in the standard kit. These are the Zero Ackerman uh, steering setup here that I got. So this is in, in the uh, standard kit, but relatively cheap. And uh, you can buy them online from G-Mate or RC Mart. So they're taking the plastic ones out of this, the kit and I've replaced them ready to go. So what I'll do, do something different than my other build series. I'll put the... Uh, Put the trusty GoPro on my head and uh, we'll see how that goes. So, sit tight guys, I'll be back soon. Okay guys, so I've got my GoPro on my trusty bold noggin. Uh, this is something different, I haven't done this before, so let me know in the comments if you like it up here on the uh, top of my head. But uh, anyway, I'll start putting this together. And uh, obviously I can, I can edit the video fast through parts that are a bit boring or monotonous and I'll uh, pause them or put them down to normal speed uh, where I think it's interesting. But to start it off, obviously you got your main axles here. They're nice plastic, very little flash and uh, you wouldn't tell the difference between this and an axial or a Tamiya really. So if you're worried about quality with the G-Made, uh, rest, uh, rest assured that uh, you'll be getting good value for money and there's um, yeah, you've got nothing to worry about. So, you've got to make two of these axles, one for the front and one for the back, obviously. And let's move this light down here a little bit. Alrighty, ready to rock the Casbah. Kind of like it. Set up like this, everything in front of me. I should do it more often. Alrighty, so, let's get cracking. Make two. Yep, that's what I want to do, thank you very much. And, can you believe it, that I have, am missing some stuff already. Where are they? Do, 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 do. All right. Let me find them. Okay, we're back in business. That's right, I was looking for these. Found them. Oh, yeah, yeah, I thought that was one piece, but you had to build it. You had to get the bevel shaft and the uh, 14 tooth bevel gear and uh, put it together. Nothing that exciting. You just use a 2.5mm E ring to lock it all together. And uh, yeah, it's nice. So, you have these little differential bearing caps, and they just seat inside there like that. And all they do is they hold the uh, bearing in place so it doesn't move around. What we need are small ball bearings. Sorry if I'm looking over there, I'm just checking, making sure in the viewfinder on my phone that everything's in, that everything that uh, you can see, you should see. So there we go, very easily. Get the bigger bearings here, which need to put one in the back. Make sure you push them in nicely. One in the front there. Like that. Happy days, and they fit in there nicely. And now your combined bevel gear and shaft should slide in there. 
like you know what. Sorry if the lighting in here is a bit crappy, I'll fix it up for the next video for sure, but uh, here we go. So obviously I've got to make two of them, but I'll make that one off camera. So yeah, very easy. Okay, so off camera I'll just grease these uh, 32 tooth pinion uh, bevel gears up, sorry front and rear, nothing really exciting about that so I thought you wouldn't mind. Okay so obviously it's a front and rear axle, uh, instructions tell you to do the front one here first, you can choose any one you want to use, but you have to do, and it, uh, the instructions do tell you to make sure that these are actually the, the uh, the C hub carrier is a, is the correct way up, and they have actually little arrows up here that tell you it's pretty obvious. Don't face it down, put it the right way around. So pretty common sense, but anyway, just let you guys know. One ball bearing in there, and yep, make sure everything lines up with the pictures, and put it in. I guess it's a fairly easy mistake to do but hey better to be safe than sorry and then I only needs two screws here and the good thing about the G-Made kit is everything is pretty much um, a nylon uh, lock nut which is good a lot of it is M3 which uh, yeah I, I like seeing M3 the only thing I wish it came stock with is um, Allen keys, Allen key heads or stainless steel ones but hey that's that's neither here nor there you can always upgrade to that if it really bothers you that much but it doesn't really bother me that much so I'm not complaining so uh, I'll tighten all these up and I'll do the other side and I'll show the, show the result okay both uh, see how carriers are in left and right Tighten down and uh, ready to go to the next step. Fairly easy, going well so far. So, need to put the bevel gear, bevel gear in now and make sure that's all lubed up, ready to go. Instructions tell you to just put it in this direction. That's always important. And now we're going to put the drive shafts in. Now, make do take note for the front. Uh, axle assembly, there's two different sizes one is 69 millimeters and one is 64 millimeters so just make sure you put in the right one in and it says here so if you're looking at it in this direction the 64 millimeter which is this one goes in this side and it's just got like a flat notch here that obviously joins up with the bevel gear. Now it's just a matter of finding that notch and it should just slip in like that. We have a connection. Obviously if it was too long it'll be sticking out and you know you put it in the wrong, the wrong way. So there we go. Cool beans. See inside it, inside an axle there, works quite well, nice and smooth, no binding, which is what you want. Move around a bit so that all the grease gets all in between all the teeth, and that's it. Sweet, so it's a straight axle, well, one whole piece, there's no diff inside there. Good stuff. Now, the next step. These cool differential covers, yes they are alloy or a, a metal which is always nice touch instead of uh, chrome plastic which inevitably will chip off so this is just basically make sure it's the white right, right, right way around can't talk properly today and we use these small 
2, 2.6 by 6 mil screws. So I'll put them in and I'll show how it looks. Okay, that's all done. Now it's time for the knuckle arms, and these are a fairly easy job as well. So we need the wheel axles, doesn't matter left or right, they're the same. As I said before, I've got my aftermarket ones here, Zero Ackerman knuckles, and just a direct replacement for the stock, stock plastic ones. So all you gotta do is pump these bearings on either side. Good fit. Push your wheel bearing in there. Make sure everything's seated in there nicely. is lined up perfectly. Let's move it around a bit and it should slip in. There we go. And we secure these with these tips, uh, they're called step screws. And they just feed its way down there. And you lock them in. Fairly easy. And I'll put them in and I'll show you how it looks. Okay, so there we have one complete front axle done with steering mechanisms all on, ready to go, and they all work, which is good. So, next step, the rear axle. Very similar procedures, but uh, doesn't have the knuckles, obviously. Okay, I'm just putting some more grease. Uh, bevel gear here for the uh, rear axle. Looks like mayonnaise. I'm gonna try it though. when I build these kits. Okay, get that out of the way, wipe that excess before it goes everywhere. Alright, so dropping this in that direction. Obviously it won't go anyway, if it's in the wrong way, but okay. Now like the front axle, the uh, there's two drive shafts here, one's 97 millimeters and one is 92 millimeters. We're going to make sure that you put the right ones in, but you'll soon figure out that uh, something's not going on. Something's, sorry, not going how it should be. Okay, so start with the 97 millimeter, which obviously is this longer one. We need to put in a there and where are those other pieces gone? Let me just find them and uh, continue. All right, back in business. Found them. Now I've put these four millimeter uh, clips on because if I put them on when I'm filming, I'm guaranteed they'll fly out somewhere and I will never be able to find them. God knows where they go when they do fly out. But anyway. Okay, where were we? The 97mm shaft, so we put that in here. Make sure your ball bearing's in. There we go, it's spinning nicely. That ball bearing just fell out of here because there's nothing stopping it yet, so it's in there. Another ball bearing into here. It's going to go all the way in there, so I guess you can just put that on the end like that. It's being stopped by the clip. And obviously you can't put it in, you're not gonna put it in this way. You can spin it around. It's got like a little press fit to double check and everything's in there nicely. And you lock it away 
with some 14, what is it, no, 12 millimeter round head screws with good old nylon lock, lock, lock nut. <laughs> so I'll put all these in on the other side and I'll put the diff cover on and uh, yeah, show you how it looks. Okay, so if you've done everything correctly, that's how it should look. Everything spins nice and how it should. Okay, so moving on to the next setup, sorry, next part of the uh, build is the actual leaf spring uh, setup. I'm going with the traditional, uh, well it says soft type. You can always change it because all you need is, it says here in the manual, basically soft, standard, or hard type. So, from soft to standard is just changing, putting some cable ties here to clamp the uh, two leaf springs together. So I'm just going to go to the soft type and see how it goes. So basically nice setup here. You've got the U-bolts, they're all steel. And the leaf spring uh, perch. It's a nice setup, in my opinion, in the Tamiya High Lift series. And they're all steel. Um, yeah, it works quite well. Very easy. Front and rear are exactly the same. So, haven't seen a leaf spring. That's basically a leaf spring. It goes back many, many years. It works fine. They still use them on modern cars and trucks. And obviously that's soft, really soft. This is the, uh, sorry, the soft setup. And if you want to harden, make it a bit stiffer, you, you put cable tires on these two ends here. It'll obviously give give it a bit more rigidity but like I said we'll see how this goes I'm not too fast I'm not going to be doing anything uh, too crazy with these anyway so leaf springs are easy to put together just a little bit tricky off on camera but uh, we'll see how we go so basically a u-bolt just goes around the axle like this it just holds it just clamps together once you put this leaf spring perch on there which kind of goes like that and it's held together with four lock, lock nuts like everything else and it gives you a nice sturdy uh, platform or, or hold onto that uh, onto the leaf spring. So what I'll do, I'll put these in here. There's a little hole in the leaf springs which corresponds to this hole here. Thought this might be able to do as well. So as you can see there, line that hole up. It's got a little tab in there. Make sure it's quick, correct way around. Like that. Very fiddly, it's all good. On top. Push it through. And there we go. Line it up with the hold in the uh, the pre-drilled hole in the diff there. A couple of lock nuts just hand done just to hold it in there for you. Like that. Be quiet. There we go. Nothing to it. Fairly easy. So the trick is put them together, two together, and uh, attach it to the leaf spring perch and put them both onto the axle and then feed your U bolt through them and tighten them up. So that's it, guys. It is one set up there. Now I'll finish all four up, the other three, and I'll show you how it looks. Alright, guys, happy days. 
So the front and rear diffs are all done, locked and loaded, along with the leaf springs. Very happy with how it's turned out and uh, it hasn't taken long at all. Now one thing I forgot to mention before is make sure you use the uh, supplied shock grease and just put it in between each leaf just to give it some lubrication and to stop some uh, of the uh, maybe rust and stuff like that getting on there, surface rust from forming over time. Now I've, I've jumped through and I have not completed the steps which I'll show you quickly which is regarding the servo mount right here because I've upgraded to the uh, chassis mounted servo plate, the aluminium one so I skipped that part and I've jumped directly to the steering linkage I haven't used a stock setup I've used the, the G-Mate hop up here because I've used the uh, Zero Ackerman turn knuckles so they weren't necessary but it's all on works very well, nice quality, extremely happy with it and it's uh, nice and smooth so I've, I've jumped to that, put them all together and that's where we are now so that's all the axles and everything done next video I will start on the transmission which is one of my favorite parts of any build as you guys know so keep an eye out for the next video thanks for your support guys like always catch you around have a good one